Hello, this is Scott with Wisconsin River Outings, and I just wanted to go over one of the biggest questions we have or people have questions about is, is just how the whole water level thing works. It's, and I get it, it can be a bit of a mystery for some folks. So I just wanted to go over this, um, this overview of, of how, what we're looking at, what we're looking for, um, and help you better understand how river flows on the Wisconsin River work. And I'm, I'm hopefully not gonna get too technical here. I wanna keep it high view. And my biggest thing I wanna start off with is do not get too wrapped around these numbers. And I'm gonna tell some folks that, and they're gonna spend every hour bouncing back and looking at these numbers, which does you no good. Um, you know, check the information a week out, three days out, one day out from your trip. But please don't obsess about this. It's just, it, the biggest thing is it's nothing we can, can control. So use it for the information that's available and just go, okay, well, that's where things are at. And hopefully it continues to work out great for us when, when our trip comes up. So I wanna start off at a state level. So this is a view of the US Geological Surveys uh, measuring points for water levels on creeks and rivers that they have equipment set up on. And, and this spot right here is, the, is Muscaday, which is 16 miles upriver from Boscobel here. Um, this little creek right here, or this little, uh, this little stream is actually the river of Blue River, which doesn't have a uh, um, a measure, a, um, a any sort of device on it to measure levels, but that's just a little side note. So, um, so when you when you hover over this button from this particular view of the USGS, it gives you all sorts of information. It it tells you uh, what the station is, how big a drainage area it covers, its current discharge which right now is 13,000 CFS. We're experiencing a bubble that's working its way through. Um, it also gives you the information in, in, in height. So when, when, we, when Wisconsin River Outings talks about water conditions, we always talk about CFS, which is cubic feet per second. Um, it's a much more accurate way of describing the conditions of the river for us because if we told most people right now that the river was at 3.21 feet, they'd be like, yeah, that's no problem, let's go. And granted at 13,000, there are sandbars out there. Um, it, it gives a false sense of, of what conditions on the river are, which is why we talk about CFS rather than cubic feet per second. So, and you can do that over any of these. So this dark line, is the Wisconsin River, um, and mainly it's dark because it's bordering counties. But so there's Muscaday. If you work your way up river, uh, this is the Dells. So right now in the Dells, it's running at 12,400. Uh, the bubble that we're experiencing has already crested in the Dells and is working its way down. And then as you follow up, you've got Wisconsin Rapids, You've got Rothschild and then Merrill, Wisconsin. So we're watching this whole stretch. The Wisconsin River from its, its headwaters up here on the border with the UP is about 430 miles long. And we're definitely keeping an eye on the gauges that are on the lower 300-ish miles uh, of that 430. Um, we've got internal triggers set up to let us know when, for instance, the discharge in Merrill shoots over 4,000. Um, and then we start watching it because if it's, if it's over 4,000 in Merrill, based on how the rain fell and where it fell, uh, will eventually has to go by the, by Boscobel. So we're always keeping an eye on it. So that's the 30,000 foot view. The next one that you probably want to have on your phone for while you're on the river is Alliant Energy's two dams that are upriver first in the Dells, which is the Kilbourne, 
the Kilbourne Dam is the Dells Dam, or the, the dam that's in the Dells. And then the second dam is the Prairie du Sac Dam, which we frequently call the Sauk City Dam, mainly because those two towns are right next to each other and Sauk City is larger than Prairie du Sac. But um, what this does, and they've just added some of this information, which has been great. In the past, if you brought up this page, the only thing it would show is that the, the current flow was at 12,400. And that's helpful information, but what's more helpful is knowing, is that going up or going down? How quickly is it going up and going down? So as you look across, and really all you wanna do is look at stream flow here. As you look across, in the last four hours, the river is flowing 1,200 less than it was four hours ago and it's flowing 4,100 cubic feet per second less than it was 12 hours ago. Those are all thumbs up good signs, all right? Um, and then here is the Sauk City or Prairie du Sac Dam. And because we're still waiting for this bubble to go through, uh, the water ahead of, of um, the Dells is, is still rising because right now the current reading is 18,600. It is up 2,500 from what it was four hours ago and it's up 3,500 from what it was 12 hours ago. So that helps you kind of go, all right, you know, it, it, it's heading up right now. Uh, everything above it or the dam above it is dropping. So at some point, these numbers are gonna start dropping, most likely within the next 12 to 24 hours. Um, remember that our cancellation policy is 17,000 cubic feet per second, and we will cancel your trip. There are sandbars out there at 17,000, but we're not interested in pushing it to see how much over that we can go and you still find a sandbar. So understand that when you've committed to one of our trips via either online or you booked over the phone, one of the things we're gonna go over with you is that you understand that at 17,000 cubic feet per second, we're canceling your trip and you'll have a credit good into the future. So that's that information. The next one downriver is Muscaday. And the Muscaday reading, the water coming over the dam in Sauk City, whether it's going up or going down, should arrive roughly 24 hours later in Muscaday. So you can see we've done some bouncing around here. It's gone up, it's dropped, and, and now it's on a consistent upward pattern. And as it relates to this current bubble that we're experiencing, um, this is rain. Today is Sunday that I'm recording this. There was seven and a half inches of rain that fell in small portions uh, north of Madison on Tuesday. So the seven and a half inches that fell in uh, north of Madison on Tuesday is now working its way through the dams. It's already worked its way through the Dells. It's still working its way across Lake Wisconsin and over the Sauk City Dam. And it has yet to reach here because our current reading is 13,100 in Muscaday. And we already know from this one that in 24 hours in, in Muscaday, the river is gonna be flowing at roughly 18,000. CFS. That water comes over the dam. It takes about 24 hours to arrive in Muscaday. Um, just so you know, as you look at this at this chart, the the yellow triangles here are um, are what average should be over the course of 106 years, and that's right down here. Um, so over 106 years on this day, the average uh, stream flow on the Wisconsin River is approximately 5,200 cubic feet per second. And today, as it turns out, it's 13,100. Um, and then the final thing I wanna share with you, because we count on it, and you should, is, is the NOAA forecast. And the NOAA forecast is, is what we use as gospel. Uh, and there's a couple reasons. One is it gives a pretty accurate, as far as weather goes, long-term forecast. But in addition to that, not only does it say, hey, it's gonna rain, but it gives a sense of how much. So for instance, Monday, 
you can see up here, we have a 50% chance of rain, which, you know, that means 50% chance it won't rain. But what's more important is that it's suggesting that if it does rain, we're looking at, we're looking at less than a tenth of inch of rain. So while this may look threatening up here in this image, if you read the details about the day, you know, you know, granted, if you end up in a thunderstorm, it could be possibly more, but calling Monday a rainy day because it's a 50% chance of rain, but we're only going to get a tenth of an inch is, is something, I guess, only you as an individual can decide, is it worth doing? But me personally, if it's only a tenth of an inch, I'm like, that's not a day that it's going to rain. I mean, I, I get that they're covering themselves. They're suggesting that moisture will fall from the sky, but that doesn't mean it's going to be an inch of rain. And then the other nice thing that NOAA does is it actually provides wind speeds and directions. Um, keeping in mind that wind that comes out of the west or southwest will be in your face. Uh, but I will tell you that up to around 12, 13 miles an hour, while you might while you might need to earn the miles you paddle, uh, it's not the end of the world. Um, this is an outdoor activity. If you're looking for no wind uh, and only perfect weather conditions, as we say on our website, might we suggest a Wisconsin Dells water park? Because this is an outdoor activity. We, you are going to be in the wilderness you need to have that mindset. And that means you gotta take what's thrown at you. So um, with that said, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us either via email or give us a call. Uh, thanks for taking the time to listen to me ramble for almost 12 minutes. And hopefully we get to see you on the Wisconsin River very soon. Thanks and have a great day.